Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. Welcome to my video, welcome to me. If you are new, I would love if you would subscribe because I'm doing a lot of teaching about spirit, y'all. I'm doing a lot of teaching about vibration and I have seen the evidences of life design in my own life and I wanna teach that to you. So stay connected if you're so inclined. Now in this video, I just wanna to talk to you kind of on a personal level about perspective and mindset. This is what I'm gonna be talking, I'm gonna be harping on you about this. It is so important. The, the filter through which you experience life has to be intentional. It has to be deliberate. You have to know what you're thinking, know what you're observing, know what you're experiencing and doing if you want to be spiritually, dynamically connected. That's how it works. If you wanna up level, switch your life, you got to know about your mindset and how you're thinking about things and what you're working with in terms of energy. And so I want to use a personal example here <clears throat> just to show you how it works for me. Last summer, my husband and I decided that we were going to go buy eight hens from a local North Texas rancher. And these are just Texas hens. They're not like special breeds or anything. They're just, they're so cute. And I love eggs. We had hens before when we were in Colorado and we did well. So I thought, well, sort of, there was the great chicken apocalypse of 2015, but we won't talk about that. So I just wanted more hens. And so we went and we picked them out and I just, I just looked at the, the coloring and how sweet they were and flopping around. Oh my God, I'm getting carried away. And we chose eight and we brought them home and we set up their little coop, their little palace. My husband like made little swings for them. It was so adorable. But about two or three months later, it became painfully apparent that four of my beloved hens were in fact roosters. I learned of this because one night at about 2 a.m., I started to hear them crow. And then as soon as one crowed, well, the other roosters, three of them, so four all together, realized, well, I should crow too. And soon came the cacophony. And these roosters kind of don't really get the fact that they should maybe just be crowing during the day. They start crowing at 9 p.m. at night. They crow at 2 in the morning. They're midnight, they're crowing all the time, but I think it is so adorable. I love these roosters. I love the hens. I'll go out and I'll sit on my patio and I'll talk to them. Just today, I tore open my curtains and I said, good morning, oh my God, good morning. I love to sing to them and very quickly thereafter, they start crowing back at me and I know each one. Sir Mix-a-Lot has the most broke down crow. It's all crazy and Tulip, who, I mean, I, he, she was the holdout. I really wanted Tulip to stay a hen, but clearly she's not, but he's not. Tulip has the best and most polished crow, and I know each rooster, and I love them. My husband, on the other hand, not so much. My husband, for a while now, has been advocating for chicken stock. He wants to, well, I guess he wants to kill Tulip. I don't know what, the, he's experiencing them in a much different way. When he hears them crowing at 9 p.m. at night or midnight, he's not being charmed as I am. He doesn't find it adorable, shockingly. Instead, he's getting mad and he's stomping around the house and he's waking up prematurely and he's pissed, I'm pissed off. And I'm like, the way that we think about something dictates how we experience our reality. And whereas I am in love with these roosters and think they're awesome and they bring me joy, they aggravate the heck out of my husband. And it's the same thing with life generally. We choose ultimately how we feel about something that's happening in our life. Whether this is a relationship, whether this is a condition like where we live, whether this is our job or our purpose or our health or our body, we choose how we feel about that. For example, the last house I lived in in Colorado was on a highway. Like, you might as well just put me right in the middle of the highway, that's how close to the highway it was. Drove me bananas as a spiritual person, having all this crazy energy. And for the most part, I was unhappy there until I realized that it was about how I viewed the house. It was about what the house was doing for me. It was about changing my mindset and getting grateful that I even had a house, that I had shelter, that I was warm. And when I decided, because I have the choice, 
when I decided to change how I felt about the house, my entire experience in the house changed as well. Absolutely and very quickly up leveled into a vibration of happiness and contentment. But I was the author of that. It was based on what I chose to feel. And so I wanted to share these somewhat mundane examples out of my life with you so that you can hook into how reality actually works and how you truly control that which you experience and further that which you call into your life. You're in the driver's seat. You're the one who's sovereign in your life. So start today to work with what you're choosing and what you're feeling. Choose to see the silver lining. Choose to see the good in people. Choose to see and experience happiness in your life. And if for some reason you're looking for a rooster, well, I've got four, give me a call. I won't give them to you though, because I love my roosters.